for us, the end state, you know, if we're going to fulfill that ambition of becoming the true regional content hub, it is about a world class you know, infrastructure. So our end state media hub will be about a million square meters of footprint. We'll have 50 sound stages and studios. We'll have tenancy space for industry to be located there right across the value chain, whether it's in screen, whether it's in gaming, whether it's in digital publishing, it's about supporting industry learning and have you know, extensive industry learning facilities. But what do you think is the next big key milestone for you to hit at Neon? For us, it's a... I'll go to the end state, then come back. You know, for us, the end state, you know, if we're going to fulfil that ambition of becoming the true regional content hub, it is about a world-class, you know, infrastructure. So our end state media hub will be about a million square metres of footprint. We'll have 50 sound stages and studios. We'll have tenancy space for industry to be located there right across the value chain, whether it's in screen, whether it's in gaming, whether it's in digital publishing, it's about supporting industry learning and have you know extensive industry learning facilities, game studios, incubation and startup space. So you know a fully integrated media hub, both physically and technologically, and that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world today. So the ability to redefine how content's created, how young people are trained, how new ideas are brought to market, I think is, is the game changer for us. But in terms of the short term, it's really about continuing to build that pipeline up and you know, that we've been very uh, vigorous in doing because I think it's about, you know, that, that pipeline is what will start to bring, you know, the, the talent that we heard earlier that Ruler was talking about. And, you know, the, the, the more confidence they have, the more we can anchor the talent where the work is happening. And that really starts to build the foundations uh, of what's happening. Uh, and we start to build that skill set up and we really sort of get us to a stand that we're competing on a, on a global level. Pressure, I mean, is it fair to say that it's not just desert? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's something that I would love for everyone to hear. It's not just a desert. We have the modern cities, we have backlots, we have the old cities, we have in the south the mountains filled with green uh, trees and greenery. And the Red Sea. And the Red Sea. Which is awesome. <laughs> uh, Which you know, is the most exactly. Fabulous, and, and uh, yeah. we, we've doubled, we're just about to kick off with a, a series that's an inner, inner city youth show on one of the stages. So, um, you know, I think for most people, they sort of think we're a very remote, isolated spot. You know, the reality is with the international airport, we're three hours from here um, and another hour and a half to London. You know, so five hours flying time to London. So, Marco, I wanted to understand how you see your organization fitting into this? Because there is this kind of disconnect between all this talent and getting it seen and getting it represented. Yeah, I think, um, just to be clear, um, what Ahmed said earlier, um, which is, I think the international film market, film festivals and film labs are looking for talents from the MENA region because they have stories that are so unique and interesting and they have the talent. And so IEFTA's role in coming to film festivals like GUNA um, and Cairo and working with Palestine Film Lab and Jordanian Amman Film Festival, they, they focus on finding emerging filmmakers. And our goal is to connect them to the international film market. We've had great success um, in the sense that a lot of our filmmakers continue to do co-production deals. They're working in the inter international community. They've started their own film um, collaboratives, production companies. They went from uh, starting off saying, I have a film, it's my first feature. Um, I'm looking to see how I can maybe get into a film festival to being here in Cannes or in other festivals, major international festivals, um, and, and actually having multi-productions going on at the same time. And so for any international organization here that is looking to get involved in the MENA region in some capacity, I highly recommend you do it because there is there is a lot of talent and not just above the line but below the line there there are a lot of good filmmakers camera operators editors um, 
everywhere in um i think egypt is a very strong market to find these people this is where i i've met a lot of the filmmakers in the audience palestine has a great film movement jordan has a great film movement and so for us to be able to tap into this market and be able to access these filmmakers it makes us look good because we can just then work with our partners like um torino and dae and um marche efm and say we have these great talents that you should look at but it does feel um, that at the moment the main sort of conduit is the festivals and the, the workshops and then obviously Mad Solutions, you're doing agency, but that's quite rare at the moment that, to be able to just like look up and I need somebody for this film and you can go through a list of agents. That's not, that doesn't really exist yet. We've got Mad Solutions, but there's not a whole range of, of agencies. I, I, think the, I think everyone is wearing several hats in the MENA region. For example... I am a founding board member of an organiza <coughs> organization <coughs> sorry. sorry, called IEFTA, but I'm also a filmmaker that happened to do a film in the MENA region. And I think that there's Mad Solution, there's Arab Cinema. Um, there, it's, it's a bit complicated in the MENA region. Everyone has to do wear more than one hat in order to move things forward. But it also takes a village to work with one filmmaker. They need all the support they can get. We used to be mentoring filmmakers on how to make films. Now they're just calling us up and saying, we need a little bit of money to fly to Cannes. We need a little bit of um, help to to secure funds doing you know something in Venice. Or, and we provide those funds. They no longer need the mentorship from us because they're, they're, they've developed their talents. So <clears throat> I think when you go to the MENA region, you, you, you know, there's room for different players, but you, ha you have to wear different hats in order to survive the market. How is the market changing for art house cinema in terms of getting it into movie theaters uh, in the Arab world? It's still the toughest uh, part because we don't have a base for art house cinema. F of course, France is the ideal example you're talking about, as Michel said, and there's this regular dealing with universities, schools. Uh, you have the audience to explore. They have a great success recently with a documentary uh, finding. Now. Yeah, and it's staying for four or five weeks now, getting more admissions, etc. In the Arab world, it's tricky. W there is art house cinemas, but it's nothing for the bigger number of more than 400 million people around. So you cannot count on, on this. But at the same time, it's uh, the much better space for art house becoming more on platforms. We already, with Shahid, uh, recently we signed many films actually, including, inshallah, well, at the first run of the film, it will be on Shahid even before it was selected in Cannes. And this is a sign that there is more understanding for the importance of diversity of films, etc., and also about who's making the films, even if you don't have a stars. Uh, we keep trying pushing the films in cinemas. Yes, most of the time we don't get a great results, but for example, actually, yesterday, there's the film uh, uh, society, uh, uh, Egyptian Film Society. They give an award, uh, awards every, uh, every year. Last year, we released two Jordanian films in Egyptian cinemas, and it was the first time ever uh, to release a Jordanian film, because the Egyptian market, it's either Hollywood or Egyptian films. The films didn't work uh, well, anyhow. But <laughs> the best Arab film from this uh, 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 film society went to the Jordanian film Daughters of Abdurrahman, because the criteria to be released in cinemas, in Egyptian cinema. For us, it's a step, so, because, you know, it's, yes, it might be slow, but it's a step. Even if you, you didn't have any money, but you're getting awareness and you, you're being beside the other uh, Egyptian winners and uh, uh, you're getting the space. Uh, the other thing, it's also how to uh, not to put a super high expectations or difficult film. In Saudi Arabia now, the theatrical release is becoming way and more and more harder and complicated. Because it is about, of course, uh, the revenues, same like the Hollywood system. The COVID killed the uh, option of giving more space and more diversity in the films you're taking. You want more revenues. Plus, you have to, uh, to go to the secured success, which is now the Saudi and Egyptian content. Either, either with that, we released also, we keep releasing, there is a space, but not the exposure, because you cannot ex uh, invest a lot on the advertising 
uh, for the art house or independent film or the medium budget film. Uh, uh, the, other, the other side, the star power, which we talked about it. Yes, we have stars, but still it's not super driven to the cinemas and this is helps a lot. You know. It helped, of course, with some films like Sabah Mubarak and Daughters of Abdurrahman and Mundir uh, Rayahna in Al Hara, uh, the alleys. It helps, of course. So how to make to uh, build it in uh, in um, uh, a bigger role? You know, that's regionally. You know, internationally, how to push the films? Yes, it needs a lot of work. It is happening, but also when we say the Arab world, it's like saying European cinema. You cannot deal with it as, as. Uh, but at least you have similar culture in a way. If there is an audience, they will relate, whether it's Jordanian, uh, Sudanese, uh, Tunisian, Moroccan, most of the story, they will be related. That's why we keep naming it the Arab cinema. Internationally, it's getting much better, uh, actually, comparing with the Arab world when it comes to the art house films in terms of financing, in terms of sales, in terms of uh, 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 production, and in terms of uh, even theatrical release comparing with the Arab world because there is more uh, prepared audience for that. You know.